Hi everyone, hope you're all doing okay. This year we've been focusing on Jesus, considering his life and teachings as we read it in Luke's Gospel. Today we're going to look at what Jesus says about the Kingdom of God and the reading is from Luke chapter 13 verses 18 to 30. I'm hoping that you've read it already. Okay. The kingdom of God, by definition, is the place where God reigns as king, where God is king, and where God's will is being done. Remember the prayer of Jesus, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's God's influence in our lives, our families, our church, our town, our country, our world, and if we know God, it's something that we more and more long to see and seek. So before I carry on, I'm going to pray. Father God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Amen. So in the time of, that Jesus was living in, the nation of Israel were under occupation, under the rule of Rome, with Caesar as king, and the Jewish people, as their scriptures pointed to, waiting for a time when God would once again be king. And it was thought that this would happen through a person specially chosen by God, who would rule in the same way that God would. And that's what we mean when we say the Messiah or the Christ. It's God's chosen or anointed one. So as you can imagine, they were desperately waiting for God's kingdom to finally come. But I don't think Jesus was exactly what they were expecting. And I wonder what our expectations are today of God and his kingdom. So the reading starts with two little stories or illustrations as to what the kingdom of God is like. One about some dough, another about a mustard seed. And to understand the context of these verses a little better, we should also read what's just happened in the preceding verses, because this will shed some light on why Jesus is saying what he's saying. So, previously, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, and it was on the Sabbath. And to cut a long story short, Jesus had healed a lady who had been physically bound up for 18 years. And this act of healing had ticked off some people there, as Jesus had healed this lady on the Sabbath. Because to those who took God's law very seriously, considered themselves to be the authentic people of God through their strict observance of the law, this was the breaking of an important law. The Sabbath was supposed to be a day of rest when no one worked. And they saw this healing as some kind of work. But Jesus, on the other hand, said that this is what the Sabbath is all about. This lady has been bound up for 18 years. Didn't she deserve to have a rest from this infirmity? So some people are kind of cross with Jesus. But there must have also been people there who were also just blown away by what had just happened. And surely God was with this man. Maybe this was someone God was raising up to lead his people. Maybe this was the long-awaited Messiah, when God's kingdom would finally break in. If he could heal people, you know, what else could he do? Maybe he could call down thunderbolts on the occupying Roman army and liberate the children of God. Just like in the good old days. Let's get a crew together. Let's march on Jerusalem. Let's do it now. And it's now that Jesus tells these stories of what the kingdom of God is like. It is like a mustard seed. 
which a man took and planted in his garden and became a tree and the birds of the air perched in its branches. It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked through the dough. Talk about managing expectations. Once again, Jesus tells people things they don't really want to hear. The people, maybe they want the kingdom to come now, straight away. But Jesus says, it takes time. And let's face it, we're impatient. Never more so than in the times that we're living in now. We want everything now, or even yesterday, preferably. We want change to happen now. But these stories are a reminder to us that the kingdom of God takes time, that we need to be patient, and that we need to trust God. In the story of the dough, the yeast, the yeast is hidden inside the dough. And if you've watched dough with yeast in, it seems like nothing is happening really. But in the end, it's obvious the effect that the yeast has had on the dough. You know, we live in a culture that's obsessed with measuring progress. We want to see the evidence of progress. So a little shout out to the homeschoolers out there. You know what I'm talking about. But we need to trust God when it seems like nothing is happening. God is at work, but we don't always see it. What God is doing is sometimes hidden from us, just like the yeast in the dough. But in time, we will see it. What's also important for us is that we keep growing. So if we're, if we're to become like that big old tree, sheltering all those different kinds of birds in the story of the mustard seed, we need to keep growing. We can't stop growing. We'll never make it. We'll never reach that potential. It reminds me about discipleship and how, you know, discipleship, it's not just for new believers. You know, it's for all of us. And the challenge is to keep growing. You know, in order to grow, we need to get maybe out of our comfort zones a bit. Whether that's in our understanding about God and his ways, or in our lived out experience of being a follower of Jesus. But it all takes time. And that's the main point of what Jesus is saying. We need to be patient and we need to trust God. Moving on to the next part of the passage. Jesus then goes out into the surrounding towns and villages to teach. One gentleman asks him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And Jesus' response seems a bit harsh. And I can only say that Jesus must have known the reason behind the question much more than we do. Um, in my reflection on it, you know, there are many different groups at that time who claimed to be God's special people, people who would share you know, in the glorious future that God had planned, his coming kingdom. You know, Israel as a whole were also known as God's chosen people. Perhaps they saw themselves as being those who were going to inherit all of God's promises. Maybe there was a sense that this gentleman thought that because he was part of that nation or that he belonged to a certain group, he was one of those who was going to be a part of all of that. And Jesus' response, I'm sure, is not again what the hearer wanted to hear. Jesus warns him of being complacent, that's what it seems like to me. That he must make every effort to enter through the narrow door. A narrow door is easy to miss, it seems. In order to enter a narrow door, 
You need to be focused and deliberate, watchful and intentional. You don't just drift through a narrow door by accident or even because of your own privilege. And this saying reminded me of elsewhere in the Bible in Matthew 7, where Jesus talks about the narrow way or path. The kingdom of God is much more a way that you live out or a path that you take and continue to take. Just like in those first stories, it's a growing influence in our lives or in the world. It's not just about saying one prayer, belonging to a certain group, or even believing certain things. We're called to participate. It is a kingdom of grace though, and it's not about earning your way into the kingdom. It's more about getting in the right place to be able to see the kingdom or being open in order to receive the kingdom and then being able to pass it on. It's about us getting out of the way. In Luke 9, Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. This is the narrow path that we're being asked to follow Jesus down. And yes, that is a path that is very easy to miss. Maybe sometimes on purpose. But this is the path that leads to where deep down we know that we belong. A path that leads to our greatest potential as human beings. We used to believe way back that everything revolved around the earth. The sun revolved around the earth, the stars and the planets. We were at the center of it all. But it turns out we aren't. Actually, along with some of the other planets, we revolve around the sun. And the sun is just one star among billions in the known universe. This is a massive change of perspective, and we went from seeing everything in relation to us, with us at the centre, to seeing things much more universally. The more and more we let go of our own self-centred lives, the more we will find ourselves in a much more generous and spacious space. And this is where our true identity lies as the children of God. We no longer see everything in relation to ourselves, but we see through God's eyes. We no longer think just our own thoughts alone, but we have the mind of Christ and we share the same attitude as him. This is without question our fullest potential. And the stories that Jesus shared at the beginning of our reading today both have wonderful images at their conclusion illustrating the amazing potential of the kingdom in our lives. Just imagine someone with a large amount of dough, and it is a large amount of dough, apparently, at the communal oven in a village, in the middle of a village. You know, you're not just able to feed your own household, but you're able to, to feed perhaps the whole village. There's a real generosity being spoken of here, the generosity of God's kingdom. Or of the tree that now fully grown is able to shelter so many different creatures and birds. And maybe before, as it was growing, it could only shelter maybe a couple of birds. But in the end, as it, if it keeps growing, it's able to shelter the many. Just in the same way that God is able to shelter everyone. So, that's the end of what I've got to say. So here's my questions. 
Our first question is, well, what are you waiting for? What are your expectations of the kingdom of God? My second question is, what are the practices that help us be less self-centered and more God-centered? And thirdly, what kind of generosity do you think that we're capable of? Thanks a lot. God bless you all.